to all of you brethren. I'm very happy to see you. Um, happy to see Sister Gully doing, looking good. <laughs> and uh, I know we know the Lord is good and he will always be there for us. We may not be there for him, but he's going to be there for us if, if we're faithful. <clears throat> um, just one quick word about the situation with the tithe. Uh, Sister Abernet, you did well that, uh, in your talk speaking uh, to him that he was uh, satisfied to do and that's the requirement, half of the requirement, that the teachers uh, instill the understanding and in the people's mind to where they are, uh, they accept. But we also have the standard of uh, having them do uh, uh, the right thing agreeably because they believe it's the right thing. Okay, and that's a very important thing. It is something that has, it's a principle that has been set out in the message from the 1930s. It's not our principle. It's a principle Brother Hadith set out with repeated warnings in the codes not to do that. And it's not that anyone is a bad person or anything, it's just that we, uh, have to follow what the message says in every regard. There's a reason for everything. And um, I'm very sorry about that. And one last point about um, we are out here in the woods peacefully away from everything. And that's true. But what people don't know if, if they don't look it up is that the crime rate here in Barry County is the last time I looked was higher than New York City. And people do not believe that when you tell them. <laughs> but uh, it is very high. Of course, if you just are in the middle of the woods like we are, normally you don't have any crime rate. But, um, but yes, the crime rate is very high in some of these um, um, Ozark Hills and Hollers that are still not fully into the modern world in, in all regards. And in some ways, they're too into the modern world. Lots of, of crime of all description, per capita, which is the catch there. Um, our subject is additional qualifications for being an end time Davidian. You know, we all know that we must know the message, uh, that we must live the message, that we must teach the message, and um, but there are uh, there's more to it than that. And so, uh, we have uh, some key additional qualifications for being an end time Davidian that I would like us to think about. To be a Davidian is not a common thing, as we've mentioned before. And we cannot accept a commonplace, uh, worldly type of, of uh, attitude among ourselves. Some people are so eager to bring people into the message that they, just to bring a body in is all that they think about but not everyone qualifies to be a Davidian. And we're sorry about that. Um, the Lord has made uh, the, the requirements uh, such that um, it is not impossible for your average Adventist uh, to meet them. What is necessary is a determination in our mind a desire to come into line, to meet these requirements. If we have no desire to do these things, we will never do them. We will never meet them. So that is what the key prerequisite is. And 
When we say that um, it's not a simple thing to be a Davidian and it's not something everybody can do, it's, it's, it's not because they are mentally, morally inferior. It is because they do not want to pay the price. They don't want to make that effort. And that's very sad to be almost a Davidian, but not quite fully a Davidian. And there's a lot of almost Davidians out there, a lot. So that is our, going to be our subject, and let's have a word of prayer to open first. <clears throat> our Father in heaven, we thank you that you have uh, kept uh, your protective hand over us uh, so that we all may meet uh, for another week here at prayer meeting. We thank you for the way that you have blessed uh, every one of us here and around the world. We particularly thank you for uh, being with Sister Gully. We uh, pray that you will continue to bless and strengthen her in a special way. We pray that you will be with each one of the brethren who have special problems. We pray that uh, you will help them to be determined uh, to do their part and that you will uh, then, uh, if it is your will, do uh, your divine uh, part to the, um, help them in the way that you know is best. We pray for all of the people, wherever they are tonight, who are um, struggling with the coronavirus. We, we uh, pray that you will be, continue to be with Sister Olivia's son and that all, the, all others uh, who, are, who have this, uh, that you will bless them and, and uh, help each one that you possibly can. We pray that we will be blessed by the things that we hear tonight and that uh, we will uh, uh, be um, uh, reinvigorated in our uh, desire to, uh, to um, be a Davidian indeed and be part of the great body of people that you have called us to be. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so content, to be content with what we have. Not in the sense that we can't do better, but in the sense that until we do better, we are perfectly content. Not, this is from Philippians 4, 11 and 12. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I, I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Now this is a profound philosophy here. And this is not a suggested philosophy. This is your philosophy and my philosophy. And this is the way we live if we are going to be a Davidian indeed. So we are content. We don't complain. We, we uh, do our very best at each point. We do everything that we are required to do. It is not that we are content to sit while our house falls down on us. We, that is not what this means. But it means that if we are put into a certain set of circumstances, we will still remain content and uh, at peace. We will not be troubled. Whether that is a small thing or whether that is a large thing. Whether the, our food is uh, scarce or abundant, uh, whether the food, if the food is abundant, if it is delicious and we like it, we still will not uh, 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 
um, uh, laugh and be especially uh, happy and carry on and so on. This is the way I want to always live and, and so on. Don't be so impressed by the good times or the bad times. That is the thinking behind this. We have a better place that we are going to. And uh, we have a higher ideal. All these external things that wrap up people's mind and they, it will make them happy or it makes them sad, it, it cannot have that effect on us. No external things should have that ability to uh, influence us. We are content. Now, um, when uh, we say that the external things are not to uh, make us um, happy or unhappy, uh, in the world, there will be people like, oh, you know, I've got a promotion, I'm so happy. I, I won this, or, or, or some other thing has come through, or it's my birthday. Uh, all these, whatever small or large thing it is, uh, we need to be completely content uh, with, with or without that thing, okay? Because our mind, our goals, our whole life is, is um, aimed in a higher direction. There's nothing in this world that can be so wonderful or, as to take, um, uh, take the place of the kingdom, or there's nothing that's so horrible that can uh, uh, cause us uh, to lose our interest in the kingdom, to change our mind, okay? To take it out of our mind. So. Uh, this I want to commend to you. you. We are not going to be Davidians indeed if we do not um, master this. Which means we're not going to be Davidians, brethren, because uh, uh, we are either going to be full Davidians indeed or we are not. And those who come in, those who we work to bring in, we don't try to bring in somebody who is morally defective to an extreme degree. A person who is living a very bad life, a person who is um, drinking and partying and carrying on using drugs and so on, we try to bring those people in? No, we want them to be influenced by the message. We want to try to bring them up to a higher standard, but they cannot be members in good standing with that kind of behavior. Now, I know we don't see this as in anywhere the same um, uh, situation as what I just mentioned, and, and it's true. Um, drinking and, and carousing and so on, many people have been saved in that, uh, from that condition. There are so many people who have never been saved from their um, worldly cares and, and uh, fears and so on. <clears throat> they don't think they have a need to change. And so because they don't have a need to change, they don't change and they don't develop this uh, contentment that the Lord requires of us. Okay, so do not be concerned with external things. If you think it's a small thing, I, I don't think it's a small thing because it's a make or break thing. Anything that is a make or break thing for us is not a small thing. And these things are not suggestions. This is our standard. Can you imagine having a person, one of the 144,000, who takes special pleasure and happiness because he was seated at the top of the table, the, the highest chair? Uh, no, there's no none of the 144,000 who is going to be like that. And they won't feel bad if they're put at the lowest either. <clears throat> Both mental and spiritual vigor depend upon physical health. The, and now this is a, a relatively unique teaching to the Adventists, to the spirit of prophecy. Lots of people do not recognize the fact that spiritual health uh, depends on our physical health. It's interrelated. And if we have poor physical health, it will impact our spiritual health. Now that doesn't mean that we can't be have a, 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 a sickness 
and not have a, a special relationship with the Lord, a, a, a good spiritual um, relationship. But what it does mean is that, especially in the developmental phase, to have poor health will drag us down spiritually. There's no question about that. The health of the mind is dependent upon the health of the body. And this is an appeal uh, to mothers, page 20. Uh, the health of the mind is dependent upon the health of the body. This is, a, 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 it's in one sense, it's self-evident, but in another sense, uh, you have people who are living a very unhealthy lives. They're smoking, they're not exercising, they're great thinkers, they're writers or, uh, or statesmen who uh, just came out of the hospital with, um, for getting the um, uh, COVID-19. I'm speaking about um, Boris Johnson, who is a well-known um, indulger in many different um, uh, 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 things, uh, kind of like a Churchill-type figure in some ways. Uh, but you know what? I bet he has a, a greater interest in health now that he has had a near-death experience. It's, they don't say that, but uh, if you were in the hospital on a ventilator in the ICU, you had a near-death experience to a, a close enough degree with this particular uh, illness. In uh, at least some places, New York, most people who are going on the ventilator do not survive. That's quite remarkable. Uh, since the mind and the soul find expression through the body, both mental and spiritual vigor are in great degree dependent upon physical strength and activity. Education, page 195. Both mental and spiritual vigor are to a great degree upon, uh, dependent upon physical strength and activity. Now we know today that physical activity is very important to the health of the brain and, and, and thereby to the health of uh, our, uh, to our spiritual health uh, uh, as well. Um, it is necessary to have vigorous exercise. Uh, it is necessary to walk. It is ne necessary to uh, maintain your balance. Uh, you have problems on un uneven surfaces. If you're younger, you need to continue and uh, maintain your balance. Even older, we can stabilize our balance and so on to a certain extent. Many different things about exercise that are very, very important. And uh, uh, each of us uh, need to uh, take these things seriously. Um, I commend to you, uh, besides regular scheduled exercise, the fact that we need to make our life as hard as possible, okay? Most of us have set up our life to make it as easy as possible. So uh, the, one of the small things that I've been working with with one sister who sits next to me in the pews is how do we get up from our pew? This is a tiny little thing, but it's not so tiny and uh, all that. So how almost everybody gets up is they, help themselves up with their hands. And that's a preliminary step to where you are not even able to get up, okay? Don't do that. Make your legs lift you up. No help. No help from your hands, okay? And, um, and if you have a physical incapacity, I'm not speaking to you. I'm speaking to people who are working on having a physical incapacity. Okay, so we could do this. We can make things harder for ourselves. Okay, not longer, but just harder. And so it, it, is, involves, uh, uh, it also involves the way Brother Trevor gets dressed, uh, standing on one leg. <laughs> uh, you, uh, that's, that's, you know, just make things hard and, and a little bit more difficult in everything that you do. And that doesn't take the place of regular exercise, but that will greatly increase the benefit of regular exercise, okay? So uh, I commend that to you, the need for physical strength and activity, and uh, our life should be 
uh, as, as strenuous and difficult as possible uh, to preserve our health and strength. Well-balanced mind. Every woman should develop a well-balanced mind and pure character reflecting only the true, the good, and the beautiful. Child Guidance, page 67. Now, I tried to find one where she said men have to uh, develop a well-balanced mind, but I could not find that. <laughs> okay, so the, uh, uh, the truth is, of course, that it is necessary for all of us, okay? But, um, but, but what she says here is not a small thing. It is our standard. Now, if you want to be a Davidian and you can't stop drinking, you won't make that decision to stop smoking, uh, whatever, you cannot do that. You cannot make the decision to have a well-balanced mind. I have some bad news for you. You are not going to be a Davidian, okay? In the end, a, a, a Davidian indeed. There could be, uh, there could be, uh, Brother Haddaf says that um, some of those who are not able to, uh, stand the tests will be laid away okay so that is that is a possibility but for to be a part of the vanguard to be a part of the um of the 144,000, we will be a davidian indeed if we are going to be part of that and we will have a healthy well-balanced mind can you imagine one of the 144,000? Uh, having a emotional meltdown about something or or having a bipolar episode about something okay it's not going to happen okay we have to work on being uh, 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 developing physical and mental health and strength and how is it, is that impossible has the lord given us anything that is impossible very very possible with us the biggest biggest problem the biggest difficulty is just to decide to do it. Truly, just decide to do it and really decide. Okay, really decide. We are dependent upon God for the preservation of all our faculties. Christians are under obligation to him to so train the mind that all the faculties may be strengthened and more fully developed. We have no right to neglect any one of the powers that God has given us. We are mental dwarfs compared to our father and mother, uh, Adam and Eve. We don't have the mental abilities that uh, they did, but there's something very unusual, very um, interesting here. We are commanded to develop them. We have to start developing the, these things. Um, I don't know how many of you know um, the thoughts about um, the various brain training uh, things, starting from crossword puzzles and, and on. Uh, they keep the brain flexible, okay? They, they have uh, different exercises that you can do for your brain, just like you do for your body and it keeps the brain flexible. Um, unfortunately, the brain is very, uh, the exercise, it has a very specific um, uh, response to these things. So most of uh, uh, the, the trick is to find exercises that have as broad effect on the brain as possible. But even so, it is very important to do these things and I could tell you that I personally would take no pleasure in doing crossword puzzles, and I don't do the crossword puzzles, but I know that uh, when I, uh, in, in word searching, uh, it, it will help that kind of problem uh, uh, that you start to experience. Uh, you're developing these little problems as you get older. You need to do, we need to do these things to keep our minds young and flexible as possible. The same thing as the body. We have no right to neglect any one of the powers that God has given us. <clears throat> how many of you, brethren, know about mnemonics? Sister Carol, how many of us know about mnemonics? She had training in mnemonics. <laughs> uh, yes, and uh, some of you may know also. Uh, it is a way of remembering things. 
And um, we, uh, if you have practiced those techniques, uh, uh, someone looking at you from outside of your brain will like, wow, your memory is incredibly good. How do you remember all those things? Okay. Well, the first thing is you have to try, you have to be willing to try and do the various things. But you know what? It's a system uh, that you learn. It's a system and an exercise that you go through. And before you know it, your memory is, uh, for practical purposes, is a lot better than it used to be. So don't neglect any one of the powers. That is, don't neglect the power of your uh, memory. The, 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 uh, do not neglect uh, your ability to reason, to think, uh, to understand. Uh, today, we, we face um, deception at an un, unheard of level. There's always been deception, but today, the level of deception, deceptive propaganda, is higher than it has ever been. We need to be able to see through these things. Each Davidian needs to be a clear thinker. He needs to understand, he and she need to be able to look and see straight through those things to the truth. And that is something that we are required to develop. And there are, there is a class of person who thinks all these things are going to miraculously uh, be given us. Uh, and um, I am here to tell you that the message and the, uh, the um, spirit prophecy say the opposite. It is not going to be given to us overnight. But the Lord will bless what we have. And so if we have developed one talent, he will bless that one talent. But to be among the, um, the 144,000, we need to have 10 talents for the Lord to bless. And, uh, and then he will bless what we have uh, uh, worked to develop. He will never bless us when we disobey and refuse to do our part. Uh, most people who are saying, the Lord will do that, I don't have, I'll, I'll pray about it, and so on, they're lazy. They don't want to do anything. They don't want to make the effort. They want God to do it. I'll pray about it, okay? But sometimes, uh, after we pray, we should really uh, actually get up and do uh, as well. Peaceful mind. We should, in, we should encourage a cheerful, hopeful, peaceful frame of mind, for our health depends upon our doing, our so doing. Healthful Living, uh, page 233. Um, peaceful mind, peace. To, to uh, Christians know that we are uh, to have peace, and in, a, in, a, in the larger sense of the word, uh, we do have peace when we know that our, uh, our life is in the Lord's hands, that we have, uh, we have given ourselves to the Lord and we know where our future destiny lies. So in that sense, in the greater sense, yes, we have that peace, but then there's the everyday sense of what does our face look like? How do we act with other people? Do we really have that everyday peace? Well, we need to have that everyday peace, that cheerful, hopeful, uh, peaceful frame of mind for our own health. And it is also part of our, um, it's, it, it's part of the requirements for our work. Um, when you have cheerful, hopeful, peace, peaceful people working together, they will accomplish a lot more and a lot better quality work than if you have uh, people who are anxious and angry and upset trying to uh, work with each other. So, uh, as always, uh, there are many reasons for what God tells us to do. We can try to analyze it all. We'll never analyze every, every bit of it, but we can just simply do it too, okay? And when the Lord says that we need to have a peaceful, cheerful mind, a hopeful mind, uh, brethren, that is who we are supposed to be. That is the person that we are supposed to be develop, uh, the mind that we are developing. Loving. We must love as brethren, Sister White says, uh, CM uh, uh, page 12. 
revealing our love by helping one another. We must be pitiful and courteous. We must press together, drawing in even cords. Only those who live the prayer of Christ, working it out in practical life, will stand the test that is to come upon all the world. Now, we, we are seeing how this could come about. We are seeing these things come about. There are strange things, uh, forerunners uh, uh, out there, okay? I don't believe that the end is right tomorrow uh, uh, because our work has not been done tomorrow. Uh, but it is coming, and uh, the enemy is going to be uh, striving to deceive the whole world in different ways. We don't have, we have a outline of the future history, but we don't have a detailed day by day, minute by minute uh, listing of what is going to happen. Uh, the enemy will try to fool us. The enemy will try to uh, deceive us, but exactly how, there are many different ways that he will work. We must love as brethren, revealing our love by helping one another. We must be pitiful and courteous. Now, by pitiful, she means sympathetic. Uh, it is, when you have this, uh, 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 this pity and sympathy for someone, uh, it is right away you start feeling things from their point of view, seeing things from their point of view, okay? And, uh, we are so set up that if we don't feel for the other person, it is very difficult to see the uh, things from their point of view, okay? Intellectually, we can see and just be hard-hearted and not caring, but if we are pitiful, as she is saying here, uh, we will uh, see things from their point of view. It's very important that we feel for each other. It's part of loving each other. Consider it, Christ's rule of life by which every one of us must stand or fall in the judgment is whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. Matthew 12, 7, 12, and this is um, CSA um, called to stand apart, page uh, 62. Um, that's the, that's the basis of the golden rule, consideration for others. Now, what's interesting here is, Sister White says, um, every one of us must stand or fall in the judgment. So we have a lot of things that we are thinking about, sighing and crying, um, uh, reformation, and, and so on and so on. This is practical reformation here. If we um, if we fail to do this, this is what we are going to fall on in the judgment. So the golden rule, whatsoever ye would that men do to you, do ye, all, uh, do ye even so to them. Now, it is, uh, it, 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 from our point of view, it's like, I'd rather do things my way. Why do I have to take into consideration someone else? But um, the Lord asks us to take into consideration the other person. That's, that's, what, that's what our religion is about. It's not just my way and bulldoze right through. It is how, meeting the other person 50-50 uh, 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 as much as you can. Sometimes maybe more than that. Sometimes less, depending on the situation but always taking the other person's needs and desires into uh, consideration. His desires count, okay? If our desire counts, his desire counts. And so, well, he doesn't need that, she doesn't need that, perhaps, but if they really have, uh, have a strong desire and it's not something wrong, meet them halfway. Try to meet them halfway. We try to meet them all the way if you can. Uh, so this is what it means to be considerate. Now, 
I hope that people don't do this, uh, uh, don't uh, ignore this and like, this is just nicey, nicey stuff. I don't need to be that way. I don't need to do that. Because here's the thing, brethren, this is what we are going to, uh, every one of us must stand or fall in the judgment on this. How we treated the least of these. You want to kick around the least of them? Uh, we are going to pay for it in the day of judgment. A lot of people, the day of judgment seems like a long ways off, you know. But for us Davidians, we shouldn't think that. The day of judgment is not a long, long ways off. Faithful. It is by small things that our characters are formed to habits of integrity. The mind must be trained through daily tests of habits of fidelity to a sense of the claims of right and duty before inclination and pleasure. Uh, brethren, the 144,000 have a sense of right and duty such as never has been seen in this world before. And they cannot be tempted to depart from right and duty. And always we must ask, what is our duty? It's not what is our pleasure, what is our convenience, it's what is our duty. We um, like to think well and high of ourselves, and yes, it is a wonderful thing to be part of the 144,000, but it is about duty. It's not about privilege, it's about duty, about fulfilling the duties that the Lord has given us. And it is a tremendous responsibility uh, to be um, a shepherd, to be taking care of the, uh, the souls of other people, of the eternal salvation of other people. It, uh, above everything, we need to be conscious of right and duty constantly. Minds thus trained do not waver between right and wrong as the reed trembles in the wind, but as soon as matters come before them, they discern at once that principle is involved and they instinctively choose the right without long debating the matter. And we know what is right. We're debating with our, the resistance, our fleshly desires. That's what the debate is about. Well, we don't have time to do, debate. We need to do what is right. And if we do what is right only after a long struggle each time, we, have, we need to develop, we need to grow, we need to uh, become stronger in the Lord. <clears throat> but as soon as matters come before them, they discern at once that principle, uh, that principle is involved and they instinctively choose the right course without long debating the matter. They are loyal because they have trained themselves in habits of faithfulness and truth. Many people today do not consider uh, 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 loyalty to be uh, an important virtue. Uh, we ha in the business world, it's like, uh, yep, you give me a good job and I'll just drop it and leave you anytime I feel like I can get a better job somewhere else. And so it's very hard to uh, to win people's loyalty, hold it uh, in the business world. Too many times the world's ideas uh, come over with us. And we need to be loyal. We need to be loyal to the Lord, first of all. We need to be loyal to the message. I see so much disloyalty to the message and Brother Hadith uh, as Elijah out there. It's just amazing how little faithfulness there is. But um, we also need to be loyal to each other. And that means how we treat each other. We don't, uh, people who are loyal to each other don't uh, smile, at people, uh, smile at people's face and then stab them in the back and turn around uh, and, and, and gossip about it, okay? This is not uh, being loyal. We need to be loyal to, uh, uh, to uh, the association. Um, many times I, I see an attitude is like, well, what, can, what more can the association do for me? How much more can the association do for me? And there are people who have, uh, who have expressed that very clearly. Um, if we're loyal to the association, to, uh, we will be 
uh, trying to help and protect and support the association, not just financially, but with our words and deeds and actions. And so uh, that is something that's very important. Our actions, our, our way of thinking rubs off on other people. The new people pick up how we think. Very important that they learn the right uh, ways of faithfulness. By being faithful in that which is least, they acquire strength and it becomes easy for them to be faithful in greater matters. Now, it doesn't count, uh, faithfulness is not a difficulty if there's no um, pressure to do different, no uh, desire to quit early and get out of here or something. You know, if you're just, uh, if there's no reason to, for you to not do the right thing and you're just coasting along doing the right thing, that's not what we're talking about for faithfulness. Faithfulness is doing the right thing under pressure, under criticism, under, uh, uh, at a cost. So there will be people uh, who will criticize us for doing the right thing. I, I know um, I have a little thing that I tell people, um, you have done a good deed and you will be punished for that, okay? But it's the truth. Many times it's, uh, we do the right thing and on the earthly level, uh, the circumstances come together to where we are um, slapped for doing the right thing. Okay, we just get a slap or, or so. Uh, still be faithful, okay? Don't let that slap uh, cause you to not be faithful. Do what is right. And the Lord is watching. All people who, who are doing the wrong thing, uh, will, they will, um, uh, he will see that. He, he, he misses nothing. And, and uh, he will also bless you for those things that nobody else sees. He will reward you. We know that. He has promised that. Able to think logically. Now, brethren, uh, I'm not making these things up, but I am emphasizing these things. And I, I promise you that these are part, these are part of our requirements. They have always been part of our requirements. And I promise they're going to be part of our requirements as Davidians. We are going to master all of these requirements. And they're from the, the Lord. They, they have been there. They are not new. We're not making up anything. And all of God's commands are binding on us. All of his commands. Okay, uh, today. We're not talking about the command to go and... and uh, slaughter a red heifer and burn the ashes and so on. We're talking about all of the commands today. Are, they are binding on us. Close reasoners and logical thinkers are few for the reason that false influences have checked the development of the intellect. So, there are going to be false influences that oppose this. They have opposed it in the past. The enemy has used these influences in the past. And there are going to be people who stand up and oppose this because they are, um, uh, they are being inspired by the enemy uh, as a false influence. There are, uh, for every time the Lord tells us to move forward in a certain way, there will be naysayers who are, think it's, uh, something's wrong with it, something's bad, and so on. Now, all that talk about what, what they say is just a smokescreen for the enemy he wants to create this false influence to divert us from the way that we should be going. Close reasoners and logical thinkers, they are not going to be few among the 144,000. There's going to be 144,000 plus uh, close thinkers and uh, 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 close reasoners and logical thinkers. Every single one. What does it mean? It means that when you are given a set of uh, information, you can study the information. And I'm not talking about technical things like how to uh, put in a, a uh, IP network uh, and uh, through the bushes and stuff. Uh, but uh, uh, we, every spring here, we have a situation where our Wi-Fi 
uh, in er various areas uh, starts to fade out. But anyway, that's a separate thing. That's a technical thing. Um, what it means is that that information that you're given, it's like you are to drive to the airport, wait a half hour in the uh, cell phone parking lot, go up to the gate, uh, door, pick up somebody, leave the airport, go over here, pick this up, and so on. And you're able to understand and follow those instructions. And if somebody gives you a deceptive um, thing, and um, I would give you uh, what I consider to be an example. Uh, the, I don't know what his first name is, but everybody calls him Fossey. Fossey, the, the, um, the doctor with Trump uh, at the briefings. Huh? Fauci. Okay, well, that's what everybody, <laughs> that's what everybody calls him. <laughs> you can see I need to listen to TV a little bit and learn how to pronounce these things. Fa Fa Fauci? Fauci? Fauci. Okay, well, uh, that's the danger of making up your own pronunciation uh, instead of listening. <laughs> anyway, he has come out to, uh, in the last day or two they had a failed test with Rem, uh, Res, Rems de, de, Desver, and that's as well pronounced as uh, Fossey is too. Um, and that, that antiviral drug uh, had a failed test in the Lancet uh, there this week. And so he's come out very strongly saying, no, it's actually good news. This is a wonderful drug. It's going to be real helpful for treating uh, the, um, the virus. Okay, now um, that doesn't make sense if the if the Lancet really had a bad study, uh, and I, I don't I'm saying if it doesn't make sense for him to come out and say that uh, this American company uh, it's called Gilead Sciences I think um, they uh, that their drug is really going to make a difference. Okay, he's found that that negative study uh, caused him to be excited about it. Uh, now why? Well, uh, quite possibly, and I, I, I know that I'm, I don't want to trespass here with evil surmising, but very often in the, in the medical world, okay, it's happened time after time and people have gone to jail and uh, drug company executives have gone to jail for this and many have not gone to jail when they deserve to go to jail. But they will be influencing uh, people with stock and with uh, various gifts and, and, uh, and even money. Uh, and so th it, the only reason someone could be excited about a drug that may be failing is because he has an a, a interest in it. Okay? And let me not say that's the only reason, but on the surface, uh, if, to be a close thinker, I want people to, a close reasoner, I want people to put that possibility up on the table is like, well, is this an honest position on, on his part or does he have a financial interest in it? Now, you can't say definitely that he does have a financial interest and that's why I want to come around the circle here and make it clear that I'm not saying that, but I want us to have that, uh, that, that understanding that that's one explanation. When you see people doing something that doesn't make sense, they have a motivation. There's a whole bunch of, the politics is so deep into this thing. It, it, it is, um, it is uh, you can see how a great country uh, uh, destroys themselves with, with these corrupt uh, and um, uh, powerful um, uh, political um, uh, uh, conflicts. Um, there are people who want to get the country open quickly for political reasons, and there are people who want to keep the country closed down as long as possible for political reasons. I, I am just telling you the facts. I'm not making a judgment there. Uh, the only judgment that I have is it is a bad deal on both sides. They needed to come together and work harmoniously as one for the good of the country. And that's not what they're doing. Uh, but um, but, but when, we, when we see uh, lots of things going back and forth, people saying this, people saying that, and so on. We, d we, we need to understand that, that, um, that we cannot just jump in and make an assumption. 
We have to, uh, to be a, a logical thinker. We have to say, okay, we see A here, we see B here, we see the uh, things in, be in between, and until we have more information, we just leave it there. We really don't know what is going on with uh, the forces that are at work and so on. But, and so sometimes we are not able to make a definite uh, determination, and sometimes we are, okay? Sometimes there's enough information to, like, well, uh, you know, uh, this particular thing is pretty much um, 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 uh, clear. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, there is enough information to make a decision on the hydroxy, uh, 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 hydroxychloroquinine. Uh, um, that is a drug that has been around and been researched and been uh, subject to numerous scientific studies in the, for a long time. And many, many people have used the drug safely for a long time. So, um, uh, so th it is possible to understand that um, some of these things are beneficial under certain circumstances. And why are people speaking against it? Well, it's political. If A says it's good, B automatically opposes. Okay. And, and that, uh, we, we, we understand that kind of thing. So I don't want to get too wrapped up in this right now with details, but it is important to learn to be a close reasoner in, uh, in situations where there's a lot of, of uh, information coming at us from both directions, and it's confusing us. And a lot of people just get confused and they like, uh, break away and find some third idea like it's the Illuminati's fault, okay? <laughs> and uh, that is also wrong, okay? If you don't have the full information, don't jump into it. Uh, and the chances are, if it's a secret society that is controlling the world secretly, and uh, uh, then you don't have that secret information. <laughs> so, um, uh, there is a lot of rules, a lot of procedures. As with anything, you don't just like, okay, I think I'm going to be a master close reasoner and logical thinker today. It takes time to start to apply these things. But I'm determined that myself uh, will, uh, will learn to, uh, to do these things, and I want everyone to be able to do it. And we want to be able to throw up uh, uh, scenarios to you to where you have to think it through. You have to see in the midst of, uh, of confusing information and uh, prejudice and so on, what is the truth? And sometimes uh, you will be able to actually think through and see the end if you are logical. So that is what the ability to think logically uh, is about. And it's very important because uh, there are people out there who depend on our ability not to see through them not to be able to see the contradictions in their behavior, in, their, in their, what they're saying. Uh, they depend on us being blind or, or incapable of, of, of analyzing these things, and we need to be able to see that to protect ourselves. All our workers must have room to exercise their own judgment and discretion. God has given men talents which he means that they should use. He has given them minds, and he means that they should become thinkers and do their own thinking and planning rather to de than depend upon others to think and plan for them. So um, if we uh, look at it as a, as in terms of computers, uh, you have one master computer that is a uh, central computer that's sending out instructions all over, controlling things everywhere, okay? Well, guess what? If you have only one computer like that human, uh, 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 physical, material world, not, not the Lord we're talking about, um, that computer is going to get uh, overloaded. It cannot do that. You cannot operate that way. You need to have everyone able to think and plan in a sensible way. And this is one of the hallmarks of the 144,000. They are able to think and plan in an inspired way. And they don't think and plan contrary to each other. 
they have learned how to work together harmoniously. If everybody knows what we're supposed to work, uh, what we want to do, if everybody knows the procedures of how we are to go about our work, then in theory, we should be able to work uh, together without uh, going off on a tangent. Now, the third element is the Holy Spirit. If we are in touch with the Holy Spirit and um, we're willing to, the Holy Spirit is softening our hearts and it's like, talk to, so, talk to uh, Lloyd over there. See what he has before you go off over this way. Okay, talk to uh, uh, Sister Carol over here before you go off that way. Okay, uh, so be, uh, if we, um, if we are um, un being influenced by the Holy Spirit, we're not going to go off on some crazy mistaken thing. So this is the way that we want to move. The Lord has given us this, that we are to all learn to think and plan. And we will work together. We don't work independently. And in doing this, it will work perfectly when we do it according to the Lord's will. As we do it to, according to our will, it will work perfectly bad, okay? And it will be a complete chaos, okay? If you have everybody going off on their own, doing whatever they want to do according to their own standards and so on. But if we are working according to the standards of the Lord, the procedures of the Lord uh, that he has given us, uh, uh, it will work real, real good. Okay, and we're closing with this thought. No guile in their mouth. The workmen for God should make earnest efforts to become a representative of Christ, discarding all uncomely get gestures and uncouth speech. He should endeavor to use correct language and pronunciation. <laughs> There is a large class who are careless in the way they speak, yet by careful, painstaking attention, these may become representatives of the truth. Every day they should make advancement. They should not detract from their usefulness and influence by cherishing defect, defects of manner, tone, or language. Common, cheap expressions should be replaced by sound, pure words. By constant watchfulness and earnest discipline, the Christian youth may keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking guile. Um, CT. Consuls of Teachers, yeah, thank you. Um, uh, at 238. Okay, so, um, we uh, do need to speak um, better. Um, I need to feel a lot worse about my mispronunciations and set a good example. And um, it is possible to take a few minutes ahead of time and uh, check out those, difficult, those words that we're not sure of. In some cases, it would be like a long list of words, but uh, some of us, uh, uh, but um, still, we need to uh, check it out, and uh, 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 there are people who it, it matters to, okay? And it needs to matter to us because it does matter to them and to the Lord. Um, we need to um, uh, avoid cheap expressions. We need to... Um, uh, discipline our tongue uh, from evil um, and our lips from speaking guile. Uh, there are a lot of Davidians who don't seem to have a difficulty in uh, speaking with guile. And I know that's a surprise and hard to believe, but I, I, ca I can render examples, actual examples. Uh, 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 plentifully. And um, that oughtn't to be. We should not be like that. We need to be careful about every word that we speak. It needs to be uh, to the best of our understanding. It needs to be the truth, uh, the plain truth. 
I think some people, uh, uh, some Davidians do not realize that uh, the spirit of prophecy condemns deceit uh, as deceit. Anytime we give people the wrong uh, impression deliberately, even by an expression, Sister White says, uh, uh, of our face or uh, the smallest thing. If we deceive people, if we d uh, deliberately deceive people, uh, that is lying. That is speaking with guile in our, in our lips, with our lips. And these things are not possible for us if we're going to be part of the 144,000. So brethren, um, these are some uh, additional requirements, and you know they're not very additional. They are actually things that we know about in every single one. But I wanted to put them together in this way uh, because you, you need to be able to focus on some particular things. If you just like, uh, and let's all practice the righteousness of Christ uh, from here on and do everything we're supposed to do, good night. Okay, and you don't have anything specific. We need to f zero in on specific things. These are things that are make or break things. They're not the only things, there's many things. We have a lot of uh, things, a lot of performance uh, standards to meet. But these are things that we, uh, fundamental things that we do need to master. And uh, I want to systematically uh, go to work on these things, systematically, uh, learn uh, uh, to um, uh, what the Lord has for us on these things, that we overcome uh, uh, the tendencies to speak with guile, the tendency to uh, be, uh, not to have peace in our heart, um, uh, the tendency to not to be content. All of these things are things that we don't think anything of. We just, as a, as, as a body of people, we don't realize that we are, are sinning when we're not content, when we are not um, happy with the circumstance the Lord has put us in. And uh, he has put us in a circumstance where we have cold shower and, um, and this and this and whatever. Uh, we need to be content with that because see, we could be in a cir circumstance where there is no shower. And, and we need to be content with that too, brethren. <laughs> Remember my experience in Haiti. I was content, but I suspect that those around me were not content. <laughs> Brother Caleb knows the truth. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we do need to be um, uh, following every one of these things and a lot more too. So uh, we're going to focus on these things. We have our additional requirements to being part of the 144,000. And they're really, when I say additional, they're just additional in the way that I put them together here uh, to draw our attention to them. So, uh, brethren, uh, I hope that you uh, were blessed by these things and that you're uh, going to uh, be um, motivated to go out there and uh, whatever it takes, you're going to feel peace uh, and contentment and all these other things. Okay? God bless you.